now. Hi, everybody. My name is Daniel Matura, and I am the co-chair of Columbia Arts Access, which is a program of the Columbia Alumni Association and is a hub for experiences, insider access, and discovery. Membership is free and open to the Columbia community, including alumni, students, faculty, and staff. I want to thank uh, all of you for, for listening in and uh, also thank our panelists for, for being here today to talk about the Kite Runner, which is currently playing on Broadway at the Helen Hayes Theater. Uh, if you've checked out our Arts Access newsletter, you'll see we have a discount code as well as discount tickets for a special Columbia night. Uh, so I want to start by introducing our panelists. Uh, we have Jody Kaplan, who is an internationally renowned producer with extensive experience in the Middle East. She utilizes dance diplomacy to leverage cultural understanding, and she serves as an arts investment advisor in China and produces large scale cultural events globally, including Olympics collaborations. She's currently collaborating with Lois Greenfield on an international feature film, The 18th Parallel, which explores ritual dance and prayer around the world. Coinciding with the Olympics in Beijing, Jody Kaplan's Booking Dance Festival was endorsed by the US ambassador in China and featured Lois Greenfield's large scale installation projected positioned on a huge outdoor screen in the heart of Beijing. As a large scale event producer, Jody Kaplan specializes in press and media launches with top corporate clients and PR firms, including Golan Harris, Edelman and Porter Novelli. She worked with the Tate Modern in London as the visual designer and producer and curated performances at the United Nations in New York City. As an artist, Jody Kaplan is internationally renowned for producing and directing dance films. Her award-winning shorts have screened at more than 100 festivals, museums, and venues worldwide, including new directors, new films at the Museum of Modern Art, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, Dance for Camera at Lincoln Center, and the World's Fair in Lisbon, Portugal. Her work has also been broadcast on PBS and the Sundance Channel. Jody is a former dancer and choreographer and toured as a guest dance artist throughout Europe, Asia, the Middle East, and the Caribbean. She's been a Fulbright Scholar in Dance and received an MS, MFA in Film from Columbia University. Next up, Ryan Bogner is a Tony Award nominated producer and entertainment entrepreneur who specializes in forming innovative strategies for the development, distribution, and exploitation of intellectual property to the living stage. He's currently the co-president for content for Broadway and Beyond Theatricals, a full service production company and theatrical booking agency, which he founded with partners Victoria Lang and Tracy McFarland. He is a theater management and producing alum from the School of the Arts. With over 15 years of production and development experience and 20 years in the theater industry, Ryan has produced shows and events on Broadway, New World Stages, Williamstown Theater Festival, The Ohio Theater, 42 West, The Zipper Factory, Julia Miles Theater, Dixon Place, New York Musical Festival, and the New York International Fringe Festival, as well as countless developmental workshops, readings, and concerts in both the live and digital spaces. Notable past productions include The Woodsman, Here Lies Love, Where We Belong, The Orion Experience, Yeast Nation, Dr. Trivago, Top Hat, Big Fish, The Share Show, and Cheers Live on Stage, among others. And finally, Ferran Tahir made his film debut playing Nathu in Disney's 1994 live action version of Rudyard Kipling's The Jungle Book. He since appeared in such films as Picture Perfect, Anywhere But Here, Charlie Wilson's War. He is a graduate of theater programs at the University of California, Berkeley, and the Institute for Advanced Theater Training at Harvard University. To hear his guest starred on many television series, including Alias, The Practice, Family Law, The Agency, NYPD Blue, Lost, Seventh Heaven, The West Wing, Walker, Texas Ranger, The DA, 24, Monk, Justice, Cold Case, Chuck, Hawaii Five-0, and Warehouse 13. He also starred in the medical drama series Grey's Anatomy as Isaac and appeared on the CW series Supernatural as the Egyptian god Osiris. In 2016, he played the titular role of Othello in a production by the Shakespeare Theatre Company in Washington, D.C. So obviously very excited to have this uh, incredible panel of uh, unbelievably experienced people with us to talk about The Kite Runner on Broadway currently. So I want to start um, with uh, Jody Kaplan, and I want to hear from Jody. Uh, can you tell us more about your evolution from the dance world into Broadway producing, and what specifically about this show, The Kite Runner, inspired you to take your first co-producing? 
Thank you so much, Daniel, and thanks for this opportunity. And it's an honor to be on this panel with Farhan and Ryan. So my trajectory is an interesting one. I have a very strong dance base, um, expanded internationally, and always viewed my role as a dance agent and producer from a dance diplomacy point of view. I have an international relations degree from Hebrew University as well, and just have spent a lot of time internationally. So to me, dance and the performing arts is a way of bridging cultures. So I had really been pushing dance from the US into China as a way to kind of connect our cultures, expand their understanding and experience of dance, produced a festival during the Olympics in Beijing, and then subsequently was booking tours, like 30 city tours. I've worked with 47 cities in China. And my partner said, why don't we continue to work together? What about maybe bringing some Broadway? And we both look at this from um, you know, a financial perspective of expansion. So I met with Martin Dodd in London to bring productions from touring companies in London. I also met with some producers of Broadway shows in New York and was just shifting into that when Martin said, why don't you come and see my show on the West End of London while you're in town? And to be honest, I almost didn't go because I thought I'm not bringing the kite runner to China. Um, and I was on a train to Exeter and my brother said, get back on the train immediately. He's a professor of economics. And he said, this is the best show I've ever seen in London. You go back three hours, turn around immediately. So I went back and I saw the show just to enjoy myself. And at the end, I said to Martin, I can't wait to tell my friends to come and see it on Broadway. And he said, we don't have plans yet. Would you like to be involved? So this was five years prior. And I said, yes. And um, then I moved forward with the Kite Runner and realized that I really needed to be part of a team that had experience in Broadway. And that's why, you know, Ryan and his partners have those years behind them and learn more about a structure in place. So for me, this was my opportunity to kind of learn the, the land, if you will. And now I feel so grateful because I've loved working with Ryan and his team. And I love that the actors in the show have been just such a highlight. And again, for me, this project connected me with Martin and I loved it, but I also loved it from a humanitarian angle. So I remember at my first meeting with Ryan and Victoria just saying like, for me, it's very important that we leverage this production and help the people of Afghanistan. And so, you know, there is a discretionary fund from the producers. We have also uh, positioned and promoted charity opportunities for audience members and, you know, hoping to potentially connect with diplomats in the next two months while it continues its run. So again, for me, it's an honor and um, I have other projects I can tell you about later as well. Well, thank you so much for that. One of the things I, I love for people to hear when, when we do these panels is about the process and often how long the process can, can take. Uh, so I want to send this over um, to Ryan and I want to hear a little bit more about that process, especially for a property that is uh, an incredibly well-known and loved book that was also a film that was a production that was in London. So uh, it, in that way of like sort of taking this property and bringing it to Broadway and the the why and the the how of, of doing that. Well, it originally came to us. Um, so uh, my company, Broadway and Beyond Theatricals, and my partner, Victoria and Tracy and I, our company, um, our primary business besides the Broadway that we do is, is national tours. And so it actually, we were connected with Martin Dodd who produced the West End production in that role. He came to us and said, you know, we have had this great success touring the United Kingdom. We'd love to do that in North America. And so that was our first exposure to it was looking at it as a tour. And prior to COVID, we were exploring the possibility of just, just bringing it over to tour. Um, but as we spent more time with it, and as we, as the world sort of continued to shift, it became very clear to all of us that this deserved to have a life on the greatest stage possible, Broadway. And um, we were working with Daryl Roth's team on a few other things, and um, she 
uh, alerted us to the possibility that there might be a slot at the Hayes in this season. And we jumped at that chance because we felt that the show needed to be seen by the widest audience possible, needed to be seen by a Broadway audience. Um, and it's you know proven to be a good choice. And it, it will also still have its life after, after Broadway, but we're very proud that we've been able to bring it here. Well, let me give you a quick follow-up because you sure. talked about uh, events in the world. So, you know, uh, obviously like uh, these events are something that involved the United States, Afghanistan over the period of decades. And, you know, just last year with the pullout from Af Afghanistan and the images that we see and the stories about the Taliban coming back, which were much more in the news, obviously, in 2001 and two and three. So when you talk about world events connecting with this play, we're talking about world events that are um, I, I mean, they're incredibly significant world events, but also like clashes of culture and war and conflict. So can you talk a little bit more about that as you present a story that is also just a wonderful work of art and, and piece of theater, but has this political connection that 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 must be uh, talked about and discussed. And, and as Jody mentioned, um, with the, the producers fund for, you know, humanitarian efforts. Yeah, so we are partnering with a few organizations. We're actually doing an event with UNHCR on Saturday. Um, we're bringing a bunch of people to raise some money, which will be exciting. That's the UN. That's the United Nations uh, refugee organization. But to answer your question about how it relates to the cultural, you know, we. I'm not from that part of the world. I don't have the expertise of that part of the world. So it was important to us that we bring in people to do. So we, we, we have this wonderful person on our team, Amira Gilzai, who is our cultural consultant, who is from Afghanistan, who really worked very closely with us to make sure that this, this production was as authentic as possible. We also have been blessed to have people from the region, like Faran, who have also been able to lend their own, you know, experience and how it relates to to what we're doing as well and their expertise as artists and as people um, and that's been super important uh, in how we've addressed that issue of how do we be part of the conversation and we've had some wonderful opportunities there was a great piece on CNN that Faran was a part of with Azita and Amir Arison um, that talked about this exact question that you're asking about how um, the story that we're telling that yes is 20 years old relates to what's happening in the world now so i think that's been an important part of the conversation that we're trying to have um around what we're what we're doing every night I, I i love hearing that because i i hear that you educated yourselves and in doing so you're providing this uh forum to also educate audiences uh which i think is a is a really beautiful thing and it shows how theater and how broadway can actually be in a dialogue with world events and can have this great significance and can open up people to characters and performers and cultures uh, in, in such a great way. Um, so I wanna take this now uh, to Farhan to talk a little bit more um, about that. So Farhan, I wanna ask you uh, really as your experience um, now from the acting side, uh, if you can tell us a bit more about your experience and uh, how you prepared for this role, and I'd love to hear, you know, different aspects. So, you know, obviously you're preparing for a role uh, that you might have seen, uh, you know, on film or, you know, you've read about in a book. Uh, so I'd, I'd kind of love to hear about your process and how you got into that. Well, you know, I, I read the book uh, when it first came out. And of course the book is, is, is heart-wrenching on, on so many levels. And it, it resonates with you because uh, something that I've been saying through this process of rehearsal and performing, and also since I've known the book, that the book and the story doesn't, is not something that aggrandizes or demonizes people, it humanizes people. And it's, it's a story that that we can all connect to. And I think in this particular case, the framework that it's, it's presented in is of Afghanistan and then and, and the US, but this, this story is universal. We take the story, and put it in any other place, in any other time of history, uh, it will still resonate. And I think that's the biggest connection that we have, there's a human connection. And then on top of that, we can add 
the cultural framework we can add you know all of that the historical framework the political framework the all of that on top of that so i think at the base of of, of all of this is the is the human story and i think we see that a lot and we are very blessed uh, the people who come to the show every single night uh, starting from the first pv people erupt out of their seats and to me there's no bigger reward than that because you know we've all sat through some wonderful productions and heartily clapped for them and applauded for them but when people erupt out of their seats instinctively there is there is a connection there's a raw visceral connection that they they're experiencing with with, with the act story with the production with all of that and to me that is that that is very telling that if we can create that kind of a forum for people to to, to connect with people i think we can on on a, on a larger level we can let go or we can resolve a lot of the issues that we're facing in this world today you know because we tend to put ourselves in these little small boxes and try to look at the world from from that perspective but the larger perspective always is that what connects us is our human bond uh so so on, on a larger level that's 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 the the great thing and then on top of that i think what the production does and um i'm very grateful that most of the actors and the people who are telling the story uh you know being the conduit for the story have their own experiences uh have their own unique experiences of 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 coming from these lands coming from from a lot of trials and tribulations and i think that translates on and into the performance in many ways i mean we have actors who who are israeli americans we have actors who are, uh, who are afghan americans we have actors who are iranian americans who are, you have actors who are pakistani americans there and we all have a story to tell and i think this this particular forum and this particular story gives us that opportunity to infuse it with our own unique experience and then personalize it and make it somehow the other about that character or about that scene or about about that situation so that that has been a great growing experience for me to be able to to be able to be a, to show that story and be part of it and voice it in a way that it becomes personal um that's been that's been my experience with the show and i you know having done this for for a few years now i won't uh, date myself <laughs> uh you know when you have something unique in your hands you know uh, and i think this particular play this particular production is a very unique uh i i have called it a phenomenon because you don't see it that often you don't see people uh who come to broadway shows erupt out of this seats they've, they've seen enough theater they've seen enough enough spectacle they've seen enough enough of that you know uh but when you when you when you put something out there honestly and offer the story in in the, in the most simple and it's it's a very simple production it doesn't it doesn't go for for theatrics it doesn't go for you know uh big huge um you know numbers or 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 uh you know i don't know gimmicks to uh, to tell the story it really lends itself to the, to the simplicity of of just telling the story and offering it to people and i think it's refreshing for the audiences to see that uh, and and to to connect with humans uh, on that level so for me the character i mean uh, i think you asked me this and if uh, if not then we can, i i still think that that what i love about the about the story again because it's a human story it's about flawed people it's not trying to make especially the character or the protagonist uh, amir played by uh, amir arson in, in 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 the play and then my character baba they're very very flawed people and i think again none of us can say that that we don't have flaws and we always we are living our lives trying to redeem ourselves from some of some of the the flaws that we have i know i have and i think that that's why people connect to this you know and then on top of that you get a history lesson of what transpired in in afghanistan and you see that some it's it's happening in ukraine now it's you know i mean it's 
history keeps repeating itself. So, so we see it over and over and over again. And I think it's, it's a very timely uh, production to be telling the story right now as actually literally last week was the one year anniversary of when uh, the US pulled out of Afghanistan. So, so it's, 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 I think it's, it's, a, it's a moment. It's a moment in, in theater. It's a moment in history right now. Thank you so much for that description um, because I, I feel like you know, part of what you're communicating and what, what the show really communicates is the, the richness of the characters and the individuality and the humanity, but also the redemption uh, that's, that's involved in the story and the uplifting element of the story, which um, is so uh, emotionally involved throughout. Uh, there is tragedy and there is growth, but that there is that redemption at the end. So, you know, I've just absolutely loved hearing that from you. And I want to do a quick follow-up with you just sort of on that point. And I'd love to, just love to hear a little bit more from you about your particular character um, mm -hmm. and, you know, what it means for you to embody him. And, and even from, you know, you mentioned that you read the book. So when you started to play this character, even about particular discoveries that, that you made about the character that you may not have thought when you were reading the book or that you made about the character when you actually were embodying that character and, and the challenges and, and discoveries of that process. Yeah, I mean, uh, so especially in the production, I think uh, the character of Baba is the only character who you see go through a, a true physical and, and a time evolution right you know uh so it's it's it was very important to me that you know you can play the more obvious sides of the character but how do you infuse the other sides of this character you know i mean he's he, he's stern he's all of that but there is a human side to it, you know i mean how do you how do you fracture those masks enough that you can then that you give the audience and yourself and allow yourself to find those other sides to fill in the blanks for this guy. You know, uh, I think for me, uh, he's a very tragic character. I mean, you see him in the beginning as this very upright, very, you know, um, uh, erect man. And by the end, you see him totally frayed. And that's a story that, that, that I have seen a lot in my life. You know, people who have immigrated from other parts of the world who have come over here looking for a better life or trying to you know, save their children or their families or whatever. It, that story, I, I want to honor that story. That those people have gone through so much in their lives. You know? so, so for me, it, it, was, it was important to kind of create that, that kind of a transformation and that kind of a, of a storyline for, for Baba. Uh, and that as humans, as we as we grow in life, it's not always. It's it's important that we we start to see that you know what we start off it, off as is not what we end up uh, as by the end, and that level of understanding and there there is this connection between the the son and the father, which I wanted to really kind of explore as much as we could because th those roles start to change. Uh, at some point. In the beginning, you have, have the son trying to find the affirmation or the, the blessings of the father. And by the end, it's, it's the exact opposite. You know, the father is trying to do things. He's trying to buy a car for his son. He's trying, you know, he, he wants, because, because life has changed for him. And, and you go from this, from this very proud man to a very humble man as he goes, he goes about. So that journey to me was very important and, and to be able to, to somehow the other portray it and be the conduit for it was very important. And what, what I keep learning every day is that when the story is this powerful, you just need to get out of the way and tell the story, you know, uh, let the audience experience it. Uh, my job in that moment is just to be available accessible and fluid you know i mean something that we always talk about and we all theater people the first person who comes off the stage the first question that the actors backstage will ask you is well how is the audience doing? <laughs> and and i always think that the audience is the final character in, in every story you know and uh, once you start to interact with that character 
it's going to it's not going to change things but it is going it is going to alter things a bit yeah. because the audience will come in every night unspoken will bring their, their own sense of tragedy their own sense of comedy their own sense of romance and you you and you can feel it you know when when the audience comes in and you go aha today's audience is is slightly on this side of of the <laughs> spectrum and you know tomorrow uh, and the, another audience will be slightly on that side of the spectrum so you you find those balances because you play with them. That's that's the beauty of of of, of live theater, that that you have that ability of of adjusting to to who you interact. And that's what's so wonderful about this production too. I think is how we tell the story. We really allow for that space. Like Faran was saying, we're not we're not serving it up to you literally all the time. We're we're giving our audience room to imagine and be there with us and go to those places with go on that journey with us as opposed to some big piece of spectacle that's just which you know listen I've done Broadway musicals I love a <laughs> spectacle but that's not what this story is and we're yeah. really leaving room for that space and, and it, I think that's one of the reasons that our audiences are so engaged with us every night. And I, I, I love you're giving the audiences such a such an opportunity and, and really giving them a chance for this this journey and really respecting them right and and allowing for so many different layers. Um, so and that's why I want to I want to send it back to Jody also to talk more about you know uh, you know your dialogue with audiences. So you know we heard from Ferran about his experience as an actor and how that opens up to audiences for all these different responses. So I'd love to hear from Jody about you know, what, you, what you've heard from them and, and your dialogue with audiences and how that's evolved uh, since you first encountered this piece. Well, thank you for positioning that because I was tempted to kind of jump in after Ryan since I did see, I think I'm the only producer on the team that did see the production in London. And I want to push it back to the cast because the engagement and the commitment and the interpretation of the cast really does affect the audience experience. And this is a very different cast than the cast in London. Um, it's interesting to me, um, having been in the audience in London, which is a very reserved audience, crying, standing ovations. I mean, the piece itself is extraordinarily moving and it was in a much larger theater, but yet it still maintained that intimacy transition to Broadway. I feel like this cast has a real, as you pointed out, diverse background. There's a complete undertone of love throughout the production and trust and humanness. And there's an engagement with the audience. In London, I felt like I was watching the performance. And in, in Broadway, I feel like I am part of the performance as an audience member. And I'm trying to sit every possible seat in the theater. And every single one, I cannot help it. I still cry. I'm still emotional. I'm like, I just want to sit in the back of the orchestra tonight and just watch the lighting on the magical carpet. But no, you are pulled in because these actors are so strong and the audience experience um, being in the room um, in this Broadway house is unique than any other Broadway production because there's such a diverse audience. Um, there's like, you're seeing people like from the Middle East, you're seeing people that don't necessarily come to every Broadway show. And in fact, Ryan, it was funny, I was um, meeting with my mother and her friends and they said, oh, you know, when we went to the Kite Runner, we felt like for the first time, like, we're kind of in the minority where we don't see so many other people <laughs> like us. I mean, it was a different experience for Broadway. So I, I actually also, for me, I kind of consider myself, I just kind of came up with this term during the Kite Runner prequel, if you will, and then opening on Broadway that I consider myself now a method producer because <laughs> I, <laughs> I started taking right at, in the middle of the pandemic, I was craving like intellectual stimulation and human interaction. And I decided to go back to Columbia University and I took history of the modern Middle East in the fall last year, not knowing that the Kite Runner would definitely be moving forward. I mean, there was some interaction, but really I was in the middle of this class thinking, I don't know exactly why I was moved to take this class. I 
have lived in the Middle East myself. I do have a lot of experience in that region. And I just felt like I wanted to understand it a little more. And then the Kite Runner timing worked out really well. I think we had, yeah, anyway, it was just kind of an overlap. Yeah, we had just withdrawn. So it kind of precipitated me to take the class and understand the region. And then I've taken um, <laughs> urban space and violence in the Middle East. And now I am just starting this afternoon um, war genocide and its aftermath and just knowing you know what's happening and and just from an experience point of view i just feel like educating myself as a producer in addition to an audience member educating themselves about a region or an experience in the theater that might then spill over into their lives and recommit to um supporting and helping people in need internationally yeah it's it's, it's, it's interesting what, what jody just said because uh, once you said that i just realized that you know that the, probably the difference between the west end production and here is that at the at the west end the audience for, for the for the most part is watching the story in the third person a hundred percent you yeah. see uh when when you bring it to the us when you bring it to, yes. to this country uh, the experience is so unique of the immigrants, whether they're Afghan immigrants or whatever. But it's it's an it's a it's an immigrant experience of the United States of of, of this country. So I think there's, there's that side to it. I think it it also makes it so immediate for us because our involvement in Afghanistan, our our lives, the, the way they have changed since, all of that kind of I think comes into play. Like last night we had it was 9/11 right and we we did the show and the show has a connection to 9 11. so mm -hmm. be able to do this show in new york mm. on that day and actually talk mm. about the tuesday when in 2001 when 9 11 happened it, it it has a very different layer of of you know of connection that we have with the story so i think i think i that that also kind of adds to the to the visceral experience that we have as actors, as performers, and also as, as audience members. Can I just add really quickly, something that you said precipitated another thought. When I first saw the production in 2017, I was looking at it more like in the past tense. I'm in London, mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. the Taliban, oh, this happened. Wow, you know, I'm so glad that we've moved forward and, you know, we've helped Afghanistan. And so it was a different experience as an audience member as a as a person connected with the show to then come to new york where we the us you're right Farhan, was directly involved with supporting and then withdrawing from afghanistan and looking at the show it was monumental to realize this is not the past this is the present well jody i want to give you a follow-up specifically about that because so much of your experience is with booking dance is with touring. So I feel like you're constantly thinking about context for all types of, mm. of shows. So I'd just love to hear more about that. So you were talking about the difference between London and Broadway. So for even for the future of this show as it tours, because that is so much of your, your expertise is taking things you know globally and taking something globally to so many different audiences. Well, thank you for that. I actually am very excited because I am going to be part of the touring of the Kite Runner in, in Canada. So it's like perfect that I have the experience in the dance world touring, and then I'm now producing on Broadway, and then embracing the Kite Runner, which does have a dance scene in the wedding, to <laughs> tour Canada. And um, just following up on that, I think it will loop back. So from the touring perspective, I do, it's interesting, I hadn't thought of this until you asked the question and framed it the way you did, Daniel, that I always push the audience. So for China, for instance, I brought a company that, you know, I can market and I can angle a company any way in a, from a blank slate in China. So I really like doing that. And I brought a company that had a fusion of aesthetics dance wise and they had this one piece with kafias the choreographers from iraq went to lebanon collaborating with me i'm a jewish producer like it was just so um symbiotic 
but I paused for a second. Do I have him wear the kafias on 30 stages throughout China, or do I have him wear black scarves? And I thought, no, he's wearing the kafias. Let them come back to me and say something if there's an issue. And all they said was, they're Muslim. And I just said, yes. And it worked fine. And I just feel like it's kind of moving and opening minds through touring. And I just feel it's an empowerment as a producer to do that. And it's unifying from a diverse point of view culturally as well. So I want to I want to follow up with Ryan on that point um, specifically about again about about the touring and then also to follow up on what you said before about about this show on Broadway and you made a point of sort of the difference between shows that have it, more of you know spectacle and then this show which obviously you know is like you know more complicated for an audience and requires them to really think and react and feel uh, a lot more. And so, you know, I'd love to hear from you just a little bit more about, you know, sort of post pandemic and Broadway coming back, you know, your thoughts on, on that and where the show is placed in sort of a broader Broadway landscape of, you know, what you're able to do with this show and then, you know, what you're doing kind of with your, the rest of your portfolio. Well, I think it's two, it's two sort of things with this show. One, one is, you know, as, as Farhan was articulating so eloquently before, it's a universal story and the storytelling that we are doing is, you know, this is, it's sort of like that devised theater tradition of where we're really just telling you the story and we're, we're but there's also a soundscape and there's music and there is, it, it, there is theatricality. It's just done in a very um, theatrical way in the sort of classical sense, as opposed to what people might think of as a, Broadway milieu now with a lot of, you know, automation and bells and whistles and things like that, which I think, you know, with a story that is this universal and this moving, it's totally the right aesthetic choice because it allows the audience to go there. And I think as, you know, I give our audiences a lot of credit. They're smart they're ready for that kind of storytelling. And I think that Broadway is ready for more of that kind of storytelling. And that's one of the reasons we were attracted to the piece. So that's, that's one side. The other side is, in an, you know, what we're trying to do, I think a lot of us that are producing theater at this level, we're trying to move the cultural narrative forward and tell stories that are centered around groups and populations that are not being, have not been traditionally showcased on Broadway. And, you know, it's still a commercial enterprise, which, which can make those things which are perceived to be riskier, which again, I don't necessarily agree with that, but I think there are gatekeepers in the industry that still believe that that's true. Um, this, because it's a beloved book, mm. it, it gives a little bit of a permission structure to tell that story that's centered there. People have a familiarity with it. So if you're, and that's like our audiences have truly been diverse. We've had a, we've, we've had so many people as Jody and Ron were talking about come that don't normally come to Broadway, but we also are getting, you know, the traditional Wednesday matinee playgoer crowd you know, coming in from Long Island. Like you're getting it. And I think that's great because then those, those people that see a lot of Broadway are seeing this story that is centered around a part of the world that isn't often centered around people that aren't often centered on Broadway. And it's, it's giving a, a structure with which they can receive that storytelling um, in a way that uh, they might not, they might not have chose, they might not choose to see a story like this if it wasn't called the kite runner, I guess is the way is the way to oh. say it. But because it's called the kite runner and they know what that is and they maybe read the book or they've heard of it, they go, oh, we'll come see that, check it out. So it gives us that opportunity. And as far as your, your question about the touring piece, you know, that is why we, you know, this is just the beginning of this piece's life in North America. We want it to be seen more places. We're exploring all those opportunities now because we do feel that in the same way that the Broadway audience is ready for this kind of a, a story, the Broadway touring audience is also ready for this mm -hmm. kind of a story. And they are doing, we, they are getting more plays. And what I hope with this piece, touring to some of those markets where, you know, it's a Broadway subscription series 
that is primarily musicals, which again, I'm a musical theater major in undergrad. I love musicals. I'm not not <laughs> But I, uh, what we hope at at BBT is that by doing this in that market, because mm-hmm. it's the kite runner, it's there's a familiarity to it. It's going to open those audiences' minds to the idea of I actually like seeing a play. I would see a play. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm not used to seeing that kind of theater, but there's a whole other kind of storytelling that I could be open to. Um, and that's what one of my and my team's goals, our team's goals is in doing this is to sort of start to train um, the Broadway subscription touring audience that plays can be for them as well. And, and the presenters are starting to be open to that too. You know, they're, they're doing about one play a season in, in some markets in some of the larger touring markets where They'll do, you know, four musicals and one of them will be a play like the To Kill a Mockingbird mm. recently on Broadway is going on a tour and it's going to some of those markets. So there is starting to be more of that happening. And our hope is that this can sort of continue to further that uh, openness um, so that we can continue to tell these kinds of stories in as many places as possible. Well, I think you just deserve a lot of credit and, and applause for for doing something like that, you know, as you mentioned with the Kite Runner, it's like being able to bring in these audiences and educate them and create more space for this type of storytelling, I think is incredible. You know, sort of my question was this sort of either or kind of question. And I, you know, and I think what you just described is a way to kind of have both and have these stories that are, that educate audiences that are played, but then are also, you know, like part of the touring companies along with musicals, you know, so I think really like, um, that's incredible that, that you're that you're doing that and you're thinking about that and you're making that happen, uh, which is like a process. Well, and a shot, you know, I, I think I also should, I'll take a little sort of side sidebar and talk a little bit about the business side as a theater management MFA alum from Columbia. <laughs> um, you know, one of the other things that we're doing with with the with this and why it's working is the way we structured the the business side of this production is we, the tour and the Broadway production is one entity. The, the, the typical way to produce on Broadway and then do your subsequent national tour is you form the entity for the Broadway production and then you, you know, whatever you do on Broadway, hopefully you make money, you either make money or you don't. And then if you're gonna do the tour, you recapitalize for the tour and you have to go out and raise more money for the tour and you go back to the same pool of investors and ask them to sort of double down on their investment. What we're doing with, with this production, um, you know, we incorporated the tour into the business model from the beginning. So we, we, our budget contains the, you know, capital budget that was necessary to, to produce the show on Broadway, but also for the eventual national tour. It's the set was built and and physical production was built to do that eventually. So our investors are participating in the entire life of the property, which allows us a little more flexibility to think about, okay, we have this limited engagement on Broadway, what are we going to do next? And I think that's that's another way that, you know, these kind of innovative models are something that our team is interested in exploring it it helps with trying new things like this you know not that you know and I, I hesitate to say the word new because the kind of theater that we're doing and this this sort of storytelling is happening in so many places all over the world but maybe a little new for Broadway well what I what I like about that is what I hear is that so from a business end and then also from a creative end you're doing something that you're hoping and and and, it, and is speaking to a worldwide audience right so you're talking about it's not just broadway it's also about the tour and then for the play and the story itself you're doing something you know as as I've heard from everyone on on the panel that is speaking to audiences that are diverse that are not only all over the world, but are attracting new types of Broadway audiences, new types of people on the tour. So on that point, what I'd love to kind of go back to, um, just being sort of a theater nerd myself as well is, and I wanna take this to Jody because, you know, I think it's come up a few times as sort of this classic storytelling, but this piece also has quite a bit of texture, which has been mentioned before. So I wanna kind of send this back to Jody because, you know, from her background in the dance world, you know, you mentioned there's a little bit of dance. There is absolutely beautiful music in this show. So Ryan, I know you're saying it was a play, but there is such 
beautiful music. Uh, it's a you know play with music, not a musical. Yeah. So um, you know, in in that vein, I just love to hear from Jody and to tell our audiences for people that haven't watched it yet or that are going to watch this after a little bit more about the texture because it's really not just a play, right? So that it's it's a really fully sensory experience as much as it is like sort of classic play. Yes, it is. Um, you're going inside the world, if you will. And I know that's very um, unusual because I'm actually developing another production and in, in negotiations and consultations with an incredible writer director who said, you don't usually go inside worlds as much in theater. You go inside worlds in film. And I said, you go inside worlds and create them in dance. But in theater, it's more story based, which it is. But we're also pulling you inside a world. And what I love, I'll just say, I love the opportunity to watch the first um, rehearsal meeting with the actors. We did this virtually and they talked about the rhythm of the kite scene and they jumped right in to rehearse that from the get go. Because if you're just slightly off the whole rhythm stops which has not happened for our production um because they got the rhythm right and so this show is very rhythmical and again because i just observed i know foran is inside of that world but learning about it from that point of view of texture and lighting and it's like you really are the audience has to go halfway in instead of being pushed towards the audience is met halfway with the textures and the sounds and again it's not a musical but there's music live on stage and so to me it's like as it's the play is even going halfway towards a musical and then the the rhythms and the sounds of the kites and the it allows you to move forward in your visual memory as well as experiencing it live in the theater. Yeah. So it's very, very rich. And, um, you know, some of my investors told me, you know, for the dress rehearsal, they were in the balcony. They're like, make sure to see the lighting on the carpet. Like there's so many nuances and the scenes overlap. And I'll just share another secret um, that I learned was that it normally, you know, they're seen, they're seen, they're seen, and they're numbered, but these scenes overlap. So they're not numbered, they're named, and they overlap rhythmically. So the whole rhythm of this production, you're helping me realize, Daniel, is like a dance. And that's probably why I connect to it so, um, so strongly. For people who haven't seen it yet, um, there is a, the entire production is accompanied um, by a live tabla artist who named Salar Nadir, who's Afghan, who um, plays tabla and atan and a bunch of other wonderful uh, percussion instruments from the region. And then there's an entire soundscape that includes things like singing bowls and a wonderful instrument called the Schwerbogen that kind of simulates the, the feeling of the, the wind and the kites. And I mean, it's, it's just an entire soundscape that accompanies the whole thing. It's really a magical thing. Absolutely. I, I feel like I was so struck by that, you know, so we were sort of talking about classic theater. So I feel like I had to stop mm -hmm. for a second and just sort of say, <laughs> like, actually, it does go quite beyond that. Um, and so, Jody, uh, you know, you mentioned this sort of, you know, the, the experience of the audience and coming in and out and the, the, the landscape of these scenes. So, you know, as we're sort of um, getting towards the end here, I, I wanted to take this back to Ferran. And, you know, because you are in this and outside of it as an actor, you know, as an actor, you're in it. And then, you speak to people about this show. So I'd, I'd just love to hear from you is, is there something, you know, for people that haven't seen it or that have seen it, uh, you know, like any, anything you feel like that they they miss or you'd love for them to to notice or to, to really uh, focus on, you know, if they're gonna see it again or, you know, cause it's an incredibly textured work and there's a lot that goes on. It covers a lot of plot. It has, you know, this political element, uh, you know, is there anything that you would tell audiences or you find yourself telling people that you speak to that you see the show or about to see it that you'd love to just sort of add into the experience of this you know it, it's funny because uh, even yesterday there were there were uh, there was a group of people who had come back for the third time to see mm. 
you know, and then they keep bringing other people. Like uh, there was this group of, of ladies yesterday uh, who <laughs> brought a friend because it was her birthday. So they wanted it, wanted her to come see, see the show, and they were they came with her to see it again. And I've I've run into so many people who've done that who are repeat defend, repeat offenders. <laughs> <laughs> they keep coming back because you're right. The, the the show and the story is so textual that every time you come back, you you find something new, a new layer that you might have missed because there's so much being offered. To you. There, there is a human story being told, there's a political story being told, there's, there's an emotional story being told. And all of that kind of, all those layers, they, the more, and, and I do that even as an actor, that every time I, I get on stage, there's something new that I discover about the character, about other characters, about other situations. And it's, it's such a beautiful challenge. And I was, I was talking to Amir, the guy uh, who plays Amir, uh, my son, <laughs> in, in, in the play, but we have two very different challenges. Um, he, he breaks the, the fourth wall, right? He talks to the audience and he, his transition, his challenge is to keep the story moving and yet he can come in and out of the story uh, and, and create this, this whole experience for you. For us, the actors, we are coming in, in in vignettes, you know, and we are filling in those blanks. Sometimes it's three weeks later, sometimes it's a week later, sometimes it's a day later, sometimes it's a year later, right? And we need to bring all of that emotion, all of that reality onto the stage and then, and somehow the other verify what he's speaking and make it as real as possible for the audience to experience it. So what, what I love is, you know, I mean, I've, I've had people, there was the other day, there was this, this old man who wanted to keep, he was really old and he wanted to give me a hug. And his wife kept telling me, you can't hug him. It's, it's, it's COVID. You can't hug him. <laughs> <laughs> right. right, because, because there was, there's a scene, uh, which is a scene between, between one of the final scenes between me and my son. And he, he couldn't stop crying this way. Right, because he said that that's exactly what happened between my father mm -hmm. and me. Mm. You know, so so what I love is, and and that's why I think it's it's so amazing that you know people people are coming back to see the show. You know, they're, they're, it's not just it's not it's their first time audiences, and then there are people who who have almost become groupies of of, <laughs> of this of, <laughs> of this experience that they 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 have. <clears throat> Because I think there, there's again, uh, I go back to that that I, what I was saying earlier, but it creates such an honest connection with me that the more I do the show, I find you know deepening my own connection to these people and to these characters and the experiences, and at the same time, I think the audience is doing the same thing. You know, they're they're men who like you know, six foot four men coming up to me, and go, God damn it, I've never cried in my <laughs> in my life in theater, and you you guys made me cry. Well, you know, so, I mean, so I think I think that's the beauty of the show, and and hopefully we can just keep on honestly presenting it for as long as we can, you know, uh, to to the audience. And I think uh, that's that's to me everything. Really. That's that's beautiful. I mean, I think you know you are you're doing your job in such a spectacular way uh, when you do that, when you make people feel and you make them you make yeah. them cry in a great you know theatrical. Uh, theatrical way. So I'm going to take this now to Ryan and similar question, you know, anything else you want to add into this experience for people here that are watching that are about to see it that have seen it that are going to see it for their third four, or fourth time. Um, you know, any anything else to sort of communicate about about this project? I would say I think I think there are people that are a little daunted by the idea of the weight of the story. Yes. And, and, you know, knowing that the book is very epic. And you know, hearing that it's two and a half hours long, things like that. I think there's there are some folks that might be feel a little daunted. And mm -hmm. what I would say to those folks is, it we handle the difficult moments with such care. We we take you on a journey. It the pacing is is not. You're not going to feel like you're going to feel all of the emotions that Ferran was mm -hmm. talking about. But it's not, it, it's ultimately, I would say, a cathartic and uplifting experience because ultimately it is a redemption story and a story about hope. And I think that 
one of the reasons we're getting the reaction that we're getting is people need that catharsis right now, um, given everything that's happening and everything that we've all been through as a society with the with the pandemic and other things. So I would say, you know, if you're a little nervous because you don't want something heavy, I would say give us a shot because yeah. ultimately it's going to be that sort of cathartic, rewarding emotional evening as opposed to, oh my God, I can't believe what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I would add to that is that, you know, what I keep hearing from people is that we come in and we feel that we're in safe hands. Yes. You know, that, 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 that the story and what we're seeing on stage and the, the performance and all that, we feel that we can lean into it and give you our trust to take us on this journey. This, even the show starts with such a such a soft opening, mm. you know, that it just it makes people feel like you know what? Yeah, we might go on a, an emotional roller coaster ride, but it's all okay, you know. It's okay to be yes. on this roller coaster yes. ride because you're in safe hands the entire time. Absolutely. I think there's a real beauty and delicacy with how all of these characters and how the story is is handled. I would absolutely second that. And I want to bring it finally to, to Jody, just in kind of the same the same question. And and you know, to two audiences, to fans of the show, to to people seeing it and experiencing this this beautiful story. Um, any other layers that you that you want to add to it uh, for them and, and for our audience? Um I think what's really important is, you know, there's always different interpretations of any story. This production really is truly an encapsulation of the book itself. So, you know, the movie went in a slightly different direction. This is really bringing the book onto the stage. And I just want to frame it that way because it's quite extraordinary that it was so successfully reflected all of the nuances and layers. And for me, maybe because Ferran's right here, but even if you weren't in this panel, um, what I fi find um, is each time I come back and even um, this particular interpretation, there's different relationships. And that's really what this world's about, right? It's about relationships. You know, when you produce shows, it's who you know. It, when you um, tour shows, it's what theaters you know. It's all about relationships. So inside the story of relationships, I really found that the father-son relationship rose very high up on my radar in this time in my life because of my own relationship with my mother. It's like what you're saying, like I did not see it as strongly when I first saw the production in London. So I think that's what's interesting. You kind of tap in to where you are in your own life in this production, whether it's brothers, whether it's friends, whether it's boss and um, you know um, worker, whether it's father and son or parent, um, marriage you know there's so many layers and i think that might be fun on why people love coming back to see it more than once and why people ryan can just be open and trust that you will relate to want to it on whatever level you are experiencing in your own life it's quite magical like the lighting on that carpet <laughs> yeah, I love that you mentioned that about the novel, you know, because novels, you know, you have days to read them and, and this show, you know, in the time that it has on stage does convey so much of the richness and complexity of the novel, which is no small feat for, for a show to do and for an adaptation to do and for a, a beloved adaptation to do. And I think that this show theatrically accomplishes that so well, which is sort of, you know, it's a testament to, to all of your work. Um, you know, Ryan as a producer and Jody as a producer and Farhan as an actor that you have in the short space of time on stage brought all of this to two audiences um, is something to really, really be celebrated. And of course, to, to see the show, uh, you know, more than once and to enjoy it and, and to see it when uh, maybe in another city, when, when it's on tour um, in, in its life and, and in its future. So uh, I wanted to thank you all so much for, for being here and for giving us some, some time to talk and to discuss this, this beautiful piece. And um, as I mentioned, we, uh, in our newsletter, we have the discount code, we have a group 
that's going. Uh, and uh, so as an let's sort of have have some discussion uh, about about this work. So um, again, uh, Ryan Bogner, uh, producer, thank you so much for okay. for being here. And uh, Jody Kaplan, thank you so much uh, for being here and for helping to organize this panel. And for on to here, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your performance uh, and for all the beautiful things that you said. And um, break a leg. And as it continues, right. all of you break a leg as the, as the process uh, continues. So um, yeah, thank you. If so you much. haven't come seen to see us yet, uh, we're running through the end of October. So. Um, please come check us out. We'd love to have you. Yeah. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you so much. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Thank you all so much. Yeah. Bye.